The feast we celebrate today, the Ascension, can often feel like the epilogue of the Easter season. It's a nice way to tie Christ's victory over sin and death into a nice bow. And has more of a feeling of a parting, of separation, than it does of joy. It can seem more like a goodbye than any sort of good news. But that isn't how St. Luke sees the Ascension at all. It isn't the final chapter, but the beginning of the book of the Acts of the Apostles. And the early church saw in this feast another revelation of God's gift that goes far beyond what we could hope for or imagine. Just as the incarnation reveals the shocking lengths God goes to be with us, and the passion and and resurrection reveals what he will bear to set us free and the life that he promises, the ascension reveals how God wants us to reimagine what we might think heaven is. And that seems important. We talk about heaven an awful lot, and I would imagine that all of us gathered here want to be in heaven. And while we know it isn't some place up in the clouds with chubby cherubs and harps, it's tempting to think of heaven as a sort of this life plus. It's this life plus a little bit more, a sort of paradise with all the best bits and without all the bad parts, like back pain. And that seems, excuse me, and the feast we celebrate today, though, presents a fundamentally different, more glorious, more shocking idea. Because since Jesus ascended from the early church on to to today, the shocking idea about the ascension is that Jesus took his humanity with him into godliness. When we say that Jesus ascended, we mean that God brought humanity into his own divine life, into God. That Trinitarian life, where the Father is so in love with the Son that he gives himself completely, totally, and without restraint to the Son, and pours him out himself out so as to dwell with him and in him. And the Son responds by giving himself completely back, totally, without remainder to the Father. And the bond of love that they exchange is so real and so perfect that it is the Holy Spirit. This is where Jesus brought his humanity. This is where he desires each of us to be. We, limited, limited, material, finite flesh, can participate in the infinite, eternal, transcendent life and love of the Trinity. As we prayed at the beginning of Mass, This is our exaltation. The heaven we long for isn't puffy clouds and harps and chubby cherubs. Jesus has eternally opened up a space in God's perfect love for humanity. What unimaginable, undeserved, mind-boggling gift is this? Christ has gone ahead to make a space for us. And where the head leads in glory, the body follows in hope. Jesus, then, is our destination. The space he made for us in God's life is himself. He's also the way, the path that gets us there. And if you'll trust me for just a moment, I'd like to propose, then, that our best way of imagining heaven, as limited as as our imagination might be, comes from a game show called Hole in the Wall. In it, contestants stand with their back to a big pool of water, And across the room, behind a curtain, there's this big foam wall that when the buzzer sounds and the curtain parts, the wall will come speeding at them. And they have to contort themselves into this shape that's been cut out of that wall. So they have to contort themselves into these big X's or a jumping jack or the splits or all sorts of variations. As you can imagine, it's quite fun to watch. But if they can't get the shape right, if they can can get everything except one arm or something like that, the wall will knock them back into the pool. This, I propose to you, is the way to heaven. The Christian path that we walk is about becoming people who fit into the space that Jesus made for us in the Trinity. And that space looks like Jesus, because that space is Jesus. He has made us members of his body and brought that body into God. The Christian life is a life of being stretched and flexed and shaped and formed so that we might fit into Jesus. 
It's no surprise then why so many of the great spiritual writers write about imitating Christ, about being conformed to Jesus, of being like Christ. And that imitating and preparing and conforming grounds all that we do as Christians. Why do we work for racial justice and peace among all peoples? Because our hands have to look like Jesus's. And if our hand isn't reaching out to the other, to the marginalized, to the oppressed, we'll be knocked back into the pit behind us. Why do we treat every human life as sacred? Because if we can't love the least among us, we aren't going to be shaped in a way that can participate in God's love, which extends to every person. And why do we strive to be merciful, just, temperate, chaste, humble, forgiving, and generous? We do these things because that's what Jesus does. That is the shape and form he took, and we want to look like him. We want to be modeled according to his shape and form so that we can fit into him and the space that he made for us. And nowhere does that become more tangible and more real than here at the altar. We are trained to be like Jesus, who pours himself out in love, and most especially where he gives us his body, so that time after time, communion after communion, we might be more and more like him. When he says, take this, all of you, he not only means all of us gathered here together, but all of you, all of me, every part of you, especially those parts that still need stretching, that aren't quite aligned with him, that need his tender grace. So every time we come up to receive him and voice our amen, we can ask him to go to that place and help us to be more like him. The ascension reveals that we are meant for so much more than we can imagine. Jesus has carried our lowliness above the highest angel choirs, above the hosts of heaven, into the very life of God. That is where he made a space for us. And he not only makes space for us, but continually, persistently graces us with that stretching and that flexing and that modeling that we need to fit into him. So that through him and in him and with him, we might be ready to participate in a heaven beyond our wildest imaginations.